Now it's one thing to be identified with behaviors and say, well, yeah, I'm, I'm a morning person or I'm a night person or I need eight hours of sleep or I like uh, peaches and bananas and, or I, I like meat or I don't like meat or I do, do this or I have these bad habits, but I have these good habits. It's one thing to be identified with behaviors, but underneath that, the mind is more than identified with the Simone character, with the persona that it thinks is real. It's identified with the thoughts that are underneath all of this. That stream of thoughts when you meditate and the mind starts to drift off into the future or lamenting, regretting something from the past, wishing something could have been different. All, that whole stream of thought is totally imaginary. It's totally unreal, and yet they seem to be real thoughts. It seems to be like there's really one that's thinking those thoughts, but that's not the case either. Much, much deeper is the stillness of the real identity that literally is beyond these thoughts completely. And at one time I had a student years ago and, and she was like, wow, I'm really identified with these behaviors, but you're telling me, David, that I am not the thinker of these thoughts? Oh my God! If I'm not the thinker of these thoughts, hmm, maybe I can't be innocent. Maybe it's true. Maybe if I just start to see it that way, and, and really pull back and, and see in my mind that I'm not even the thinker of those thoughts. You know, that movie really shows it. I mean, he, he was attracted to the whole construct. He, at first he dismissed it, you know, he said that won't work. But then, after he got the package from Hank Alino, you know, he, he so much wanted to save that movie and save his reputation and save uh, his, his job, his career, everything, that, that he started to use a vector, a fake, fake set of thoughts, a fake identity and so forth, and it just got out of control. But what if it was never real from the beginning? What if none of it was? So that's what self-inquiry is about, it's going back deep enough into your mind. Yeah. But isn't that a, a long way down the track, isn't that just metaphysics? That we, because really, our experience is that we're here. If I let Mel, Melfi uh, operate on me, I would actually prefer at that point in time that she thinks about what she's doing. And if I go out in traffic and go I would actually like the people that are around me, who appear to be around me, uh, to obey by the traffic laws, because that's really quite practical. Uh, and if nothing matters, which I understand as a concept, but I haven't got that experience, then we don't really have to do anything. We can just let everything be, and do exactly as we want to do, and understand what the way that will bring us. It will be relatively quicker when Malfrey to prison and if I don't obey by the traffic laws, I will probably end up there at some stage too. Um, so that's quite unpractical. It seems, it's, first it seems that way, and then, but then, I mean, I would always be just an observer of words, like even, isn't that just metaphysics? Meta is beyond, and physics is the laws of physics. It's beyond the laws of physics. Not, not so much beyond the laws of quantum physics, we're finding out now, because when you go deeper into physics, you actually come to the same point, that it's all connected. But, but you know, you know, what we have to do is we have to turn it around and say, well, I've been doing all this stuff that I felt I had to do, I should do, I ought to do, it's practical, and we have a definition of practical of, like the Spike Lee movie, Do the Right Thing. We're trying to do the right thing. Everyone's trying to do the right thing. Never quite getting back to the point though, which really isn't 
the, the answer isn't, I can do anything I want because none of it matters. Uh, the reason that's not the answer is because it still holds the assumption of the doer. In other words, I can do anything I want because none of it matters. Well, as Ramana might say, who is the I? Who is the I that can do anything that it wants because it doesn't matter? That's not even it either. That, that just and in fact, most people can tell that if you walk to somebody on the street and they didn't know anything about metaphysics and they didn't know anything about theology or whatever, and you just walked up to them and you had a microphone and you said, you know what, you can really do anything you damn well please and it won't matter because none of this is real. They would say, hmm, something's fishy about what you just said. Something's off. I could do anything I want and it won't matter. Because the, what's fishy is there's still a doer in there who can do anything he damn well pleases or she damn well pleases. And, and in the end, that's, that's the problem. It's, it's this linear construct in which there seems to be a doer. And it doesn't matter whether the doer doesn't do anything or the doer does something or whatever, as long as there is a doer there is an object, and that object, you could even call that object a subject, you could say that the persona, like the Simone, is like the subject, and the world is the object. But there's still that, that split that's still, still there, and that doesn't resolve it. So what do you do practically? Well, if you start to just question the whole construct, which a movie like this will definitely point to the possibility, then, then that is the, we could say that's the unraveling. When you start to get closer and closer to the point, that you start to see that there can't be, there is no doer, there is no individuality, there is no person. Uh, that came out in the movie, he kept trying to slip it out, you know, tell you the truth, she doesn't really exist. Simone is not a real person. He finally comes out and says it. You know, it's like everybody's waiting for the time when he's going to deliver it. You know, she's not a real person. But, but at that point, she, he's trying to tell that to his ex-wife, and she's like, "Oh, Victor, you know, like of course actors, you know, of course she's just playing a part." But he's like saying, "No, no, you don't understand. She's really, really, really not real." And at that point, there's, there's no comprehension of that. So, in the end, there's no one we have to convince, you know, except allowing our own mind to be convinced of the truth by the Holy Spirit. We don't have to, uh, you know, he was, he was saying, I tried, to, you know, to convince the whole world that you were real, but it was really that I was trying to convince myself that I exist. That's what this world's about. It's trying to convince yourself that you have an individual, unique, separate existence. It's a big trick. It's, it's, we could even say it's kind of an elaborate trick, because it involves so much, like a gigantic cosmic trick, of trying to convince myself that I exist as a separate unique individual entity. And the only thing I can say is, I can tell you right now, it won't work. That's the only good news in this whole thing, is that it absolutely the attempt will not succeed. So, if that's the case, if you even take my word on that, or my take that on faith basis, then by joining with this truth that I'm sharing, or this essence, you could just start to see, hmm, we're fine with fake, just don't lie about it. Like, I'm not going to make the world wrong, then. I'm not going to make any of the images wrong. You know, then you can be gentle with the whole world. You can look on the world through, we'll say, loving eyes, because you don't have to fix it or change it. It's beyond being fixed. It's, it's literally beyond being fixed. And there's a joy that comes with that, you know, it's like, whew, you mean I'm really off the hook? Really, really off the hook? And it's true. We are, we are, the mind is off the hook. 